Welcome back, my new Vim friends. Have you been wanting to get faster with multi-line editing? Well, today I'll walk you through a bunch of different ways to edit multiple lines at a time in NeoVim, get you faster, and hopefully teach you some new tricks that you can use in a variety of different ways and in different circumstances. If you haven't checked out the first video on multi-line editing, be sure to watch that. I'll leave a link in the top right-hand corner. If this is your first time here, welcome. And consider subscribing if you want to see more NeoVim content. I definitely want to produce more of that, so give a subscribe and it really helps the channel. Today I'm going to cover Visual Block Mode and Vim Visual Multi, which is a plugin. I know that there are a bunch of other techniques, so I'm not going to say that these are the only ways or these are better than another way, but stay till the end. I have a few other goodies and tricks and techniques. Watch those and let me know if you have any other ones in the comments. What I'll say initially on visual block mode is one, it's built in, so it handles block editing really well. You don't have to install another plugin or, or figure out a different way, but whenever your text is off center or in different areas, that's where it tends to be a little bit more finicky. I've been playing around with Vim Visual Multi, which is another plugin. One of the downsides to that is it's another plugin you have to maintain, but the nice thing is you can quickly get in, change things, especially with tree setter and some of the highlighting. I covered this in the previous video, so definitely check that out. One of the nice things is that it handles text that is not aligned, which I'll get into a little bit here in just a second. Okay, so first example here, we're gonna do selecting text and HTML is something that a lot of people deal with. So let's go down and modify this text here. We wanna change something to a different text. If we do control V, that will put us in visual block mode. And then we can do J and K to increase or decrease our selection. Then L will go right, H will go left. If we do W, then that will select up to the word. If we wanted to switch our cursor, then we can hit O and that will switch us between the top left and the bottom right. The same actions work here. So I can decrease or increase and I can do that in either direction, which is really nice. Now, if I wanted to select some text with Vim Visual Multi, then let's start here at this top one and I do Control N and I hit that a few more times and I can see that that text is selected. If I wanna go back, I can hit capital Q and that will take me back from my selections. If I wanted to skip a selection, then let's say I wanted to do control N, but I don't wanna select this one, I can hit Q and it'll skip over it, which is really handy and nice to be able to go different ways. If I wanted to select to the end of the line, then I could do dollar sign, which I would also be able to do in visual block mode. One of the other things that is really handy in Vim Visual Multi is flipping between extend mode and normal mode. To do this, you just hit tab. And so if I hit tab here, you see that my cursors are now in normal mode and I can do things differently. Like I can go to the end. And if I wanted to select only this word, then I could go back into our visual mode, hit W, and then I can select things. If I don't want to select that, I can extend and go back over here, flip back, hit W, and then copy and manipulate text this way, which is really powerful. I'm also able to clone cursors down. So if I do control down arrow, then I can do that. And I can see that I have all these cursors and then also they stay around. So if I wanted to go to the end of the line and do something like a capital F and that to jump, then I can go back and I can jump all over the place and realign these and do some really, really cool stuff. Play around with that and see what's possible. If I wanted to select all the text that is from my first selection to the end of the file, I can do a control N and then go into multi mode. And so I do that with M. And if I do capital G, that will select all of the text that is matching on my cursor all the way down to the end of the file. Really, really powerful stuff and really handy. All right, now let's try and change some text. So like I mentioned with visual block mode, you kind of have to have everything together in a block. And so if I do control V and you go down inner word and then change from here, I can put in whatever other text, hit escape. And you'll notice that the text on the first line is the only thing that has changed. So when I hit escape, that's when this will actually apply. And we see that. So this is 
the behavior for visual block mode to be able to edit those. Now, if I wanted to be able to change text inside of Vim Visual Multi, I can select all of these, hit C, and then I can add other text here, and you can see all of them are updating at the same time. I hit escape to go into normal mode, and I hit escape again to get out of it. Now, let's say that I wanna surround a couple of these lines with quotes. So if I wanted to do that in visual block mode, then I would do control V, go down, and then in here, you wanna use capital A to insert after and capital I to insert before. So let's insert our first character and we'll do a quote. And then from here, we can do another block mode, go down, W. And here, because we have this full thing selected, then we can do a capital A and then another quote and escape and we see that surrounded. This looks great. One of my favorite things to use visual block mode for is actually in GitHub templates. So a lot of times you have to check these boxes and I really like to do that with the command line utility and editing the template. So if we go into visual block mode here, we go down and then replace, then you can replace this with an X and that will have all of your boxes checked so you don't have to click through that manually in GitHub. All right. So now let's see how this works with Vim Visual Multi. So if I select these words, then we can use a different plugin that I have, which is called Vim Surround, which I have a video on. I will link it in the description. If you do capital S and then our quote, you'll see that all of them change at the same time. I hit escape and I exit out of that mode and I'm good to go. So a little bit faster of a workflow with this tool versus doing visual block mode. I'll mention here that Usually you would not do something like that in visual block mode. You would actually use something like a regex replace. So let me show you how to do that. So in here, we're gonna do some advanced finding. So we have a JSON file that has some formatting and I kind of made this up from a template that I was using the other day, but we have some extra templates in here that are poorly formatted. So if we wanted to grab those, we could do a few different things but I wanna show you how to grab just some text inside of some quotes. And so if we did a percent %s, then that's gonna let us replace. And so this is gonna to apply to the entire file. If we only wanted it to apply to specific lines, we could do uh, just those lines right here with a comma separating between them, or we could do a visual selection and do just the lines that apply. For us, we're gonna do the whole file. So if we do a percent %s, then we can go in and do an escape because we have to put in some parentheses. We have to escape both of those. And if I do a dot star here, you can see it selects everything. And if I wanted to only select what is in the double quotes, then I can do that here and here. And we can see I've selected double quotes, except that it selects everything. And this is what's called a greedy match. And this is the default for regexes. And so if I wanted to only select, let's say the first match, then I can change this to a backward slash and do some curlies and then this little dash. And that makes it a non greedy match. And so from here, I only select on the first match instead of on the, the entire one. And then now I can use a backward slash and one and that will give me just the text that's inside of those quotes. And so you can see that's how I could eliminate those quotes if I didn't want them, or I could swap out the quotes to be single quotes instead. So use this, I've heard this called the fighting when I Kirby before, uh, where you're selecting different things, and especially with the, the dot star. So play around with this, this is a really nice way to do those multi-line replacements. Okay, now we're in a Ruby file and I'm gonna show you a different way to multi-line select stuff so that you can change your tests around or change different things. So for this, what, let's say that we wanted to change this test right here to instead be a single line for each different attribute instead of a whole block right there. To do that, let's clone this first line and we'll go all the way to the end with the E and we'll delete that. We want this line a few times and let's separate it. And if I wanted to use our Vim Visual Multi again, what I can do is I can clone our cursors down and then go into extend mode, 
do a W and that will grab all of these, hit D to delete them, go up here, go all the way to the end, do a dot and then a paste and that will get me all of those. Now I can go back down here and go to the front, clone some more cursors, delete to the end. So we can go extend here, delete, go to the end of our line and paste. And then you can see I have four cursors, but I only actually want three. So I can do a capital Q and then do an X and delete those. I can do a six DD and delete those lines there. And we're good to go. Something I want to note here is that whenever you select either in visual block mode or in Vim visual multi, you're selecting these different items. Let's say well, I want to yank them. Well, if I have one new space up here and I hit P, it's going to paste in block mode and it's going to overwrite some of our characters. So if I do that, you could see that the first line is there, but then it actually pastes over the below ones. So be sure to have enough room whenever you're selecting multiple blocks and whenever you're pasting. Another thing I want to mention here is if you try to use X inside of Vim Visual Multi, then it's not going to grab those items. So don't use X, use your C and D motions instead and Y as well for yanking and then you should be good to go. Okay, so you're still not impressed. You think that all of this has been child's play. So let's show you a little bit of a different example where you can actually select using tree sitter and some of your matching so that you can select inside of ranges. So let's say I wanted to select this address and I want to select every occurrence of this inside of this function block. So what I can do is select it, hit M to go into visual multi mode and then do inner and then curly and you can see that that selects all of the occurrences. I can now hit C and edit them and then hit escape to go back into normal mode and escape again. So this will allow you to select just inside of a function. Again, there's a bunch of different ways that I'll show you here in a second, but this is a pretty nice way to rename things inside of a function. All right, like I mentioned, we could also do this with a regex, VI and curly brace, and that'll select everything in here do a colon and you can see we're selected in our visual mode, do a substitution and we can see address and ASDF and we'll do G for global to get all of the occurrences and we hit enter and that should apply it. If you have your LSP set up, then I have mine set up to where it'll rename any of those occurrences. So you could do for me, it's a leader VRN and this will rename address and I can do ASDF and that will rename that for me. As you can tell, this only renamed the variable and not the text. So use this one if you want a little bit more finer grained renames. I also have this keyboard shortcut that I'll post in the description where it'll rename whatever is under my cursor. And so if I do a leader S, you can see that it fills out this substitution for me and I can rename whatever it is inside of the entire file. And so if I did that, I can hit enter and you can see that it replaced key map in the entire file here, which is not something I want to keep, but if you want to get all of the selections inside of a file, this is a really handy one to use. I haven't checked out this other plugin before, but something that I want to keep up to date with is this other one, which is called multi cursor vim. So I'm going to watch this one and maybe make a video about this one later on. Again, thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe so others can see this content. It really helps the channel and I appreciate you. I'll see you in the next one.